Father, you are in this place already. Holy Spirit, you are in this place. Makasete ba shika sata ta 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 ta. Rakasete ba shoko sete. Makasita ba 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 ba. Rikasete ba shika sata. Child of God, the Lord is in this place. Rikasete ba shike sata. I'll just invite you to rise as we begin. Rakasete ba shoko sata. We are still praying in the same atmosphere. Rika sita ba 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 ba. Rika sete ba shoko sata. Reke sita ma 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 ma. Rako sata ba shoko sete. Rika sata ba shika sata. Reke sete bo shoko sata. Reke sita ba shika sete. Maka sata bo shoko sete. Raka ka 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 ka. Reke sata ba shoko sata. Raka sita ba 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 ba. Rika sete ba shoko sete. Raka soto ba 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 ba. Reke sata ba shika sata. Rako sete bo shoko sata. Reke sita ba 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 ba. Rika sete ba sheke sete. Riko sata ba shika sata. Mako sete te te te. Reke sata ba sheke sata. Raka sita ba 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 ba. Reko sita maka sheke. Rika sete bo sheke sata. Raka sete ba 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 ba. Reke sita maka sheke sata. Rako sata bo shoko sete. Reke sata ba 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 ba. Rika sete ba shoko sata. Rika sita ba shika sata. Reke sete ba 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 ba. Raka sata ba shoko sata. Holy Spirit, you don't need permission. Raka sata ba shoko sata. Reke sita ba 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 ba. Have your way in this place. Rako sata ba shika. Reke sata ba shoko sete. Raka sita ba 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 ba. Rika sete ba shika sata. Maka sete te te te. Reke sata ba shoko sata. Raka sita ba shika sata. We thirst after you, God. Reke sata ba shoko sata. We thirst after your presence, God. Raka sita ba shoko sata. We thirst after your presence, God. Reke sata ba shoko sata. Rika sita ba 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 ba. Rika sete ba shoko. We long for you, God. Reke sata ba shoko sata. Maka sita ta ta ta. Rika soto ba shoko. Rika sita ba shoko sata. Maka soto ba shoko sete. Rakasita, mama, mama, rikasita, 
It is day eight of forty. Rako sataba shoko city. Child of God, reke sitaba shika sata. The presence of God is in this place already. Maka sete ba shika sata. The Lord doesn't need an agenda. Maka sitaba shika sata. He's already working in you. Rako sete ba shika sata. He's already doing his work. Reke sitaba shika sata. We are abiding in God. Rako sete ba shika sata. We don't need a prayer point. Rako sete ba shika sata. We came to find God. Reke sita ba shika sata, rika sete tete, riko shika sata bo shoko sata. Channel that God. Reke sita ba shika sata. That is deep inside of you. Maka sete ba shika sata. Your search for righteousness. Reke sita ba shika sata, rika sete ba 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 sete. Maka shika sata bo shoko sata. We are here for the presence of God. Reke sita ba shika sata. Maka sete tete tete sata reke soto ba shoko sata raka sita ba 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 rika sete ba sheke sete raka sata ba shika sata maka sete bo shoko sata reke ke 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 sata raka sita ba shika sata reke soto bo shoko sete maka sete bo shika sata rika sete ba shika sata rike sete ba Shake it, set it. Maka sata ba shika. Rako sete ba 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 ba. Rika sata ba shoko sata. Raka sete ba 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 ba. Reke soto ba shika sata. Reke sita ba 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 shake it. Rika sita ba shoko sata. Reke sata ma 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 ma. Reke sita ba shika set it. Raka sata ta ta. Reke sete ba shoko set it. Sita ba shake sata, maka sata ba shoko sata, reke sata ba shika sata. We came here to pray, child of God. Reke sata ba shika sata. We came here to pray, child of God. Raka sata ba shika sata. Engage yourself in prayer. Reke sita ba shika sata. Rika sita ma 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 ma. Reke sata ba shake sata. Reko sita ba 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 ba. Rika sita ba. We are expectant of you, God. Maka 
We praise your name, God. If you're joining us, welcome to day eight of our 40 days of prayer and fasting. God is doing it today. If you were there yesterday, you know that a mighty move of God happened. You know that we touched heaven. Heaven touched earth. We touched heaven. And God is not done. If you think that yesterday was everything, then think again because God is new every single day and is about to touch you today. So child of God, do not grow weary. I would invite everybody online and physically to post your your hearts as we get into worship. Let us meet God today.
Um, um, as you take your seats tonight, let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. We began to touch on it yesterday. We began to touch on it yesterday. And uh, it is what we use to drive us in a specific direction. Please be mindful. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Can we read this together on the count of three? Let's go one, two, three. All right, let's read that again on the count of three. That was a trial run. One, two, three. Let's go. them that bless thee and curse them that cursed thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken and, and Lot went with him Abraham was 75 years when he departed out of Haran and Abraham took Sarai his wife And they came. Yes. She came unto the plain of Mori, and the Canaanite was then in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, Unto thy seed I'll give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. Uh -huh. pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and the high on the east and there he builded an altar on the Lord and called upon the name the Lord bless the reading of his word All right we'll end there we want to begin in this week um, as we delve into the scriptures uh, on what we will build up to into what we call the circumcision of the believer right and why this is important um, as a way of building your faith and building you to the place that god wants you to be and we've been taking a very methodical journey through the scriptures as we align ourselves um, and touch on a number of things that's very clear the Bible says something interesting in the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. The Lord says something and says, My spirit will no longer strive with man. Right? The Lord said, My spirit shall not always what? Strive with man. For he, for that he also is flesh. Right? What does the Lord call man here? Calls him what? Calls him what? This is very important. What does, man, what does the Lord call him? Flesh, right? Uh, when the Lord breathed into Adam, Adam became a living being, right? Adam became a living soul. But at this point, this is very important for us to understand. That the Lord does not call Adam a living soul, or man is not called a living soul. Man is called flesh. Right? Why is this important for us to understand? Because God has been trying over time, right, to deal with mankind, right, at this point. Because the way He designed mankind was you are a tripartite being. Okay? Do you understand what that means? Right? That you are spirit, 
which belongs to God. You are a soul, right? Which is a, a, a controlling uh, center of the body, right? This is where your heart, your emotions, your intellect, and your will are housed in what you call the soul. Then there's what we now call the flesh, right? The flesh being the, the, the lowest level of a man. So there are three levels or three tiers with the highest being the soul, right? Are you with me? Are, you with, are we together? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry? The highest being the spirit. Sorry, thank you, my love. You see, the rest of you, that's why she's my wife. The rest of you just said yes. Thank you, my dear. Correct. Right? She knows what I mean. Right? The highest being the spirit. Right? Uh, that's very correct. So the highest level of, of you know, uh, existence is an eternal function called the spirit. In between is a soul. And in between or at the end is what we call flesh. Okay, uh, now what has happened here is man has been corrupted and has been corrupted in the flesh, right? Are we together so far? Right? So God has tried several attempts at this point to restore mankind. And the man's soul is now under the subjugation of what we call the flesh. There will be two clear distinctions that we talk about or two operating systems for the believer um, that operate the soul. Because like I said, the soul is the operating center. It is out of the soul that you are operating. Okay? That's why the Bible says, guard your heart. Because what? From it flow the issues of life. Right? As a man thinketh where? In his heart, so is he. Let God transform you by the renewing of the mind. So this is where your mind is, your heart is, your emotions, and all these things are, are housed in this center, this operating system or operating center control room called the soul, right? Now, the issue is not whether you have a soul. The issue is who's controlling the soul. Are you with me? And at this point, man is considered flesh, Meaning at this point, man is under the control of flesh. Somebody say amen. So because man is under the control of flesh, what God now says, he says something. He says, the Lord said, my spirit, right? I, I, you're not reading. What, 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 what letter is that? What, what, is that a big S or small S? Ah, huh? right so he's not talking of the holy spirit oh you know with me not always strive my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh and this exposes us to an a, a, a battle onset between the spirit of the man and the flesh of the man right now this is important because if your flesh is operating your life, they should be able to look at you. Are you with me? They should be able to look at you and say, I know that you know God. That's why Nicodemus can come to Jesus and say, Rabbi, I know no man can do these things unless God is with him. So when the Bible says we are made in the image and the likeness of God, oh, it means that we are called to redisplay God. That the Spirit Himself will bear witness with our spirit. And when we are under the subjugation of the spirit, right, which speaks to our spirit. Are you listening to me? Now, the Holy Spirit is without measure. Are you, with, are you, are you hearing me? Jesus had the spirit without measure. Now, you are the one that determines how much of the spirit works in you. Oh, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20.
Are we okay online? Great. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Are we there? Now, unto him, aha, uh -huh. who, who is him here? God. Who is what? Able to do exceedingly. Uh -huh. Abundantly, yes. Above all that we can ask or think. Uh, th th this is extremely serious. So Paul then says that there is a converter. That converter is the power that works in you. The power that what? There is a converter of spiritual things that God has infinite capacity, right? But God is converted through men. This is serious. That men determine how much of God we experience here that's what the Bible says. I searched for what? A man that can stand in the gap and there was none. That's what God says. He says, according to the power that what? Works in you. That means that God's ability in our lives and manifestation in this world hinges on whether the man is run by the spirit or by the flesh. Because that is the power that is at work in you. Either it is, is spirit working or it is the flesh working. The Bible says the power struggle is between the flesh and the spirit. It says the flesh and the spirit warreth. That, that's where the power is. So, you will always have the, you have the ability to stop God. You do. You do. And that will begin to show in the decisions and choices you make to either yield, right? Or to, allow, to yield to the will of God or to impose your own will. Let me give you an example. If you, are, if you are dating, you have the option to do it by the will of God or do it according to your own will. And God says you can do it. Right? I, and, and to him who decides that purity is my way, God will empower him. To him that decides, ah, we are human. Ah? So shall it be. But, but as you make those decisions, those decisions begin to impact on the ability or your ability to receive the things of the Spirit. Are you with me? They determine your ability to receive the things of the what? So God wants you to receive the things of the Spirit, but you need to create an enabling environment that allows for spiritual transactions. Spiritual communication and spiritual transactions require an enabling environment. Just like sin and the ways of the flesh, they require an enabling environment. The Bible says that concerning man, right, uh, that the carnal man, right, cannot receive the thing. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. No, let's start with 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Read this together. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. I'm going somewhere with all of this.
Are we together? Let's read this together on the count of three. One, two, three. Ah, wait. This is KJ, KJV. Both of these says this. I don't like this. Anyway, continue. Read this. One, two, three, go. All right. Now, now, yesterday, I made time to explain to you. If you were in church, go back and listen to the message. There is a belief, according to the book of Acts chapter 7, that the Lord revealed himself first to, to Abraham, right? Before Haran. Uh, and and um, I don't want to confuse you and I don't want to bring knowledge that, that, that is not a key point at this point. But there are teachings and understandings that say that Abraham began to discern for some reason that even though culture and the traditions he grew up in began to study astrology and study strange powers, Abraham discerned that there was a God behind that. And he said that this cannot just be as is, but there is a power that is greater than what we see. That the sun and the moon tend to move in a specific direction. And the Bible then says that the Lord revealed himself. And uh, historians say that Abraham would spend time in caves. And it was in those caves that, that the Lord revealed himself to him. Right? When he decided that this can, there has to be something more. And so God then says to Abraham, right, that you need to leave this country. Right? You need to what? Leave this country, right? And we know this because this was a word that was being repeated to Abraham. Now, the Bible then says here that the natural man receiveth not the things of the what? Ah? Huh? Okay. So if God is going to communicate the things of the Spirit of God, he will not do it through your senses. He will not do it through your feelings. You know, the, 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 be, the spirit of discernment is a very such gift, right? That gift is not being moody. You understand? You are, you're not, if you're moody, you're not discerning. You're just moody. Right? It's not a mood. Discernment is not a mood. Discernment is walking in, right? And seeing that everything is okay. But just having an intuition, saying, mm, something is amiss here. Right? Now, now, you can't communicate that through the things of, you understand? If you ask somebody, what, what are you feeling? You say, I don't know. Right? Who's ever had a dream? <clears throat> and in that dream, it was literally 30 seconds. But that 30 seconds felt like a three hour. There are some of you who dream like an African magic. Wow. Right? Now, you, you can't explain that in the flesh. You understand? Someone said, but how? You only dose for three minutes. How did all that happen in three minutes? Because the things of the spirit are not bound by the limitations of the flesh. The flesh is limited by time. The flesh is limited by, by, by various laws. But the spirit is an unlimited realm. That doesn't say that your dream must correlate with the time of sleep. So the things of the spirit of God are not received by the natural man. Therefore, in order for man, I'm going somewhere, to begin to receive God, he must become unnatural. That means that in our natural state, we cannot receive God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually what? Discerned. So, as we begin to walk with God, 
God wants us to begin to switch on and enhance and cultivate this capacity called the spirit realm. And it is through the spirit realm that God begins to reveal things into your life. The Bible says that at the age of 40, Moses became aware that he was not an Egyptian. Who told him? Nobody said, my friend, this is a lie. Let's do a DNA test between you and Pharaoh. There was no DNA test. There was an enablement of the spirit that Moses received and Moses had the right to reject it. Remember when we said that the spirit himself witnesses to our spirit. Without an enabling environment, the spirit will come and try to deposit things in you. But if you are being run by the flesh, you will continue to reject the things of the spirit. And then you become more and more aware of the things of the flesh. That will begin to rule you because they are spiritually discerned. Now, Genesis chapter 12, and we'll begin to wrap up for tonight. I, I want to begin to set a, a foundation for where we are going to go this week because we're going to do what we call spiritual, you know, deal with the, 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 the aspect of circumcision, right? And the Bible says, read verse 1. One, two, three. Stop. Now the Lord, it doesn't say, and the Lord said. It says, now the Lord So, this was not an appearance of God. Oh! We, 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 oh man. This is how you will begin to grow in the things of God. It, it will start like just something that you've been hearing. In your spirit. The Bible says, now the Lord had... Some of you need to cultivate that little voice that says certain things. This year you need to pray at night. The Lord had said. He didn't say the Lord now said. If you see what Abraham says, get thee out thy country, out thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land I will show thee. All this sounds present, but the Bible says, now the Lord had said. There is a communication going on within you from the realm of the spirit. And men are separated into what we call circumcision by being led by the voice of the spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they become the sons of God. So the mark of the sons of God are not people of the flesh. They are people of the Spirit. Your sonship in God is domiciled in... Please go back. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. I, I want you to read this. Your sonship in God. When we say sonship, this is not male or female. Sonship is a, a, a class in God. It's an identity in God. It says, the spirit himself bears with who? That we are It is through the spirit that man becomes separated. It is the spirit that will begin to separate you for the assignment of God. And so you need to train yourself to begin to appreciate 
the voice of the spirit, the leading of the spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. A shepherd leads by how? The voice. Because the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So, for the voice, listen, if I'm calling you and I'm saying, come, 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 come. The more I am moving and the less you are following me, the lower the voice becomes. Oh, Pastor, I can't hear God. That's because he, he had said something. Now the Lord had said to Noah, get thee out thy country. Had said. So it is believed that Noah, because he was unaware of how you could do. See, Noah, Noah, there was an error Noah made. And the error Noah made is that Noah f gave this navigation, right? Or the, is this expedition to his father. Why? Because his father was part of men that were astrologers. They studied their stars. So he, he probably thought because this man has an understanding of stars, he should be able to use the stars. Are you with me? To navigate to the land that I believe God wants us to enter. So up until that point, the Bible says, Terah, right, reached Haran and dwelt there. He reached a land called Haran and he dwelt there. Now it could have meant that Terah did not know where Canaan was. He probably thought we have arrived. Because he used intellect and used the things that men use to try and enter the place of promise. And God had to show him that when you think you are clever, I will delay you. And the Bible says it was when Terah died. So when Terah died, the navigation system that he was used to The navigation system that he was comfortable with had died. That means God now said the voice came back. And Abraham must have been thinking, but, but, I thought we've arrived. And now he has to embark on a journey. Without a navigator. And has to rely on God. I'm going somewhere. Are you with me so far? And that means that now he has to rely on God. Some of you, God has allowed things to die in your life. Because you have not acknowledged him as the navigator of your destiny. He's allowed some things to perish and some delays to happen so that he can bring you to a point that when that which you depend on dies, you now shift your dependency on the Spirit of God. This is symbolic of the believer and the circumcision from the flesh. Wherein we used to walk in the flesh, we no longer walk according to the flesh. We walk now according to the Spirit. God wants you to embark on a journey. A journey in the realm of the Spirit. Where He will begin to deposit things through your Spirit. You will hear in your Spirit, begin a business. You will hear in your Spirit, go back to school. You will hear in your Spirit, start your prayer life. You will be here in your Spirit. It's time for you to become an intercessor. The things of God are not received according to the flesh. 
they are received in the way of the spirit. So it was when Terah died that now Abraham was told, get thee out of thy father's house. Please go back to Genesis chapter 12. Get thee out of thy country, out of thy father's house, hey, out of from your kindred, from a, uh, unto a place or to a land that I will show thee. It is only by the spirit that we can discern where God wants to lead us. We cannot enter your promise according to the dictates of men. According to your family history. According to your family legacy. Everyone in your family could have been an accountant. But God says you will be a prophetess. You will be the one that will be distinguishable. God will say everyone in your bloodline has moved in this direction. But God says I will now pick one. So that I can circumcise that one. I can remove the flesh from that one. I can remove the dependence of the ways of families from that one. I can remove the customs of lands from that one. I can remove the processes and protocols that men are used to from that one. Because then he says in verse 2, he says to Abraham, after this I will make you a great nation. When God called Abraham, he called one man. But he says when I deal with this one man, when I change this one man, when I mold this one man. This man will no longer become a family. He will become a nation. He appeared to a barren man and said what is in you is not just a family. You are a nation. God wants to deal with more than your senses and more than your feelings. You see you are caught up in the fact that you don't have a child Abraham and that's because you are wondering what your family will think about you. Get thee out of thy father's house. Get thee out of thy country and then out of the traditions of your country into a realm called the spirit and in that spirit you will see that you are not just a family that you are a great nation I came to declare over somebody you are a great nation you are not just an individual you are a great nation we descend that from the realm of the spirit when God looks at you he's not looking at one man he says you are a nation can I speak to some people? The reason God deals with us is so when He deals with us, He doesn't He doesn't just become the God of Abraham. He becomes the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, because He has said that sin will enter that possession, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I came to declare over somebody. I see you in the spirit. You are great. I see you in the spirit. You are powerful. I see you in the spirit. You are mighty. But God has to do some things through you. He has to deal with you. He has to allow you to trust that voice. Let terror die. Let customs die. Let traditions die. I will make you a great nation. God wants to separate you. He wants to pull you from the crowd. God is looking for nations again. He's looking for men that become nations again. What do we mean by circumcision and separation? If we multiply you, you right now would we achieve the kingdom of God if we multiply you into 7 billion people would we know the Lord out of oh, out of this man Abraham came the nation Israel 
Israel, which became the seed for salvation of the Gentiles. For salvation is first of the Jew, then to the Gentile. God is looking to separate men by his spirit, such that he will show you what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared, has revealed to those who love him. Tonight I want you to pray and ask the Lord to separate you. Separate you for a bigger assignment. You are bigger than you think. You are greater than you think. But that is not in the realm of the flesh. It is not based according to the dictates of men. It's according to the spirit. Can you pray tonight? He's looking for Abraham's again. So he will allow some things to die. He will allow the body to die. So that that voice can come again. In the realm of the spirit. Can you pray tonight?
Genesis 12 verse 8. Listen, you will not arrive in your destiny without the help of the Spirit. It must become your... I, I, I told people this. I said this. When you walk according to the flesh, you walk as an orphan. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You walk as one without an inheritance. The, the flesh will always rob you of your inheritance. The dictates of the flesh will always rob you of your inheritance. Sorry, Genesis 12 verse 8. Verse 8. Is that verse 8? Sorry, verse 5, not 8. My eyes are, are confused. The Bible says this. And Abraham, keep playing like that. Abraham took his wife Sarai, Lot, brother, son, all their substance that they had gathered. Look at this next line. It says, and the souls. The what? They gathered the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth into Canaan. They gathered the souls that they had gotten in Haran and went forth. What will separate you, child of God, is when your spirit governs your soul. This separation only was when it was by the voice of the spirit that the soul... That souls left Haran. I want you to pray and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead me, lead me in my 2023. In my 2023. I, I know that sounds like a simple prayer, but that's a serious prayer. Because if it's not by the Spirit, you will end up in the wrong place. You will remain in Haran. Nobody brought. It was terror that said we will settle in Haran. But it was the voice that said the souls will leave Haran and will enter. And it was not the spirit that gathered the souls. They gathered the soul and moved it to Haran. I want you to pray. Say, Holy Spirit, this year, lead me in my walk. Lead my life. Lead my family. 
lead my career lead my destiny in Jesus name lift up your voice and pray just like that come on come on that that's a personal prayer holy ghost lead us lead us lead us lead us this is the difference between the non-believer and the believer our distinction is we don't follow our senses we follow the spirit we don't follow our emotions we follow the spirit we follow the leading of the spirit this is the circumcision of the believer that the navigation is commenced and commissioned by the voice of God by the voice of God can you pray Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Begin to can you pray? Can you pray that prayer point? Can you pray that prayer point? You led yourself in 2022. You led yourself in 2021. You won't enter Canaan unless he leads you. Unless he leads you. Unless he leads you. Can you pray? He must separate you from your flesh. Your soul will no longer be led by your flesh. It will be led by his spirit. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. You will not ignore his voice this year. You will not ignore his voice this year. There have been small voices, a still voice leading you. This year, your obedience will amplify it. It will amplify it. We are children, not orphans. We follow his voice. We follow his voice. Can you pray? Sababa koto te te te. Sababa kababa lo kaba le te bata. Ibaba bato te ke le baba te ke te baba toko bata ya. Sabele bato se frane si kaya. Zale proski la bata ya. Zake te ko bata ya. Sabra ko pe ke te ya. Can you pray tonight? Raba baka baba bato te ya. He baba kada kalo ko bata ya. It is the things of the Spirit that will bring you into your promise. God has an eternal plan, not a five-year plan, not a ten-year plan. He has an everlasting plan. Can you choose to hear His voice? Come on, begin to pray. You need to cultivate your ability to hear him. It was a voice that created a nation. It was a voice that gave birth to a nation. We will move by his voice. Pray tonight. You will not hop from pillar to post. You'll be led by the Spirit. Rakoto 
Kete, Anta Soka Pete, Ebra Kopete, Lamba Toto Toya. What has been leading you? There is a new captain in your life. That's the spirit of God. This is the circumcision of the believer. That we are no longer led by the flesh. The flesh will not limit us. There is a realm in the spirit that will cause a man like Isaac to plant seed in a season where there's no rain. <laughs> the Bible says Isaac planted in a famine and he reaped a hundredfold. I know we might think that it rained. It, it was a famine. It means there was no rain. It was a year where there was... You, you've been doing business according to what everyone is doing when there's a navigation system inside you called the Holy Ghost. That's why you are getting what everyone else is getting. Your career is determined by paycheck. So Laban will teach you a lesson until God begins to navigate your career. Israel moved. Do you know? Every, anytime outside of the Old Testament, I mean outside of the New Testament, that men went into Egypt, the Bible said they went down into Egypt. Because they went down and there was always a famine and that famine caused men to migrate and to journey into Egypt. And Egypt under Joseph walked into, I mean Israel under Joseph walked into Egypt but they could not walk out. They had to be delivered out. And so the reason Joseph was sent into Egypt was so God knowing that these men were led by their senses would journey into that land. He had to prepare an evacuation strategy. Through Joseph. Where have you been leading yourself? Where have you been leading yourself? When the Spirit of God is inside of you. And please, this is not just for decisions that are critical in your life. It's your every day. That's why the Bible says, by the mercies of God, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice offer holy and acceptable right be ye transformed in other words be separated by the renewing of the what of the mind that's not just changing your thinking I, I, you know this thing that we say of just mind eh, there are people with amazing mindsets that are going to hell It's about arriving where God wants us to be. The difference between us and the world 
is that the Spirit of God leads us. That's the difference. Yeah? That, that means, now this is important. It means that every time you end up in an act of the flesh, and I'll we'll start teaching this tomorrow, that was a different system that was operating. When you do certain things, it means that you have given authority and direction to another system called the flesh. Because God, God cannot tempt. God does not tempt. So God does not lead you into temptation. He delivers you from evil. Are you with me? Are you with me? I'm, I don't want to go straight into talking about walking a, living a different life. It is that. But it is a result of following a different navigation system. If you enter 2020, 2023 without changing the navigation system or changing the coordinates, you will end up in the same place. Do you know what the difference between Abraham and everyone else was? Is every journey Israel took, they, they took it themselves. Even the one time Abraham himself went into Egypt, he, no, God didn't say. The Bible says Abraham went down into Egypt. And when he went into Egypt, his wife was taken. To show him that every time you lead yourself. And so that's why the Lord had to tell Isaac expressly during a famine. Don't go down into Egypt. And Isaac planted in a famine and received a hundredfold by following the voice of God in a famine. You want to be distinguished of God? Follow him. You want to see an extraordinary harvest? Follow him. Not follow him partially. Follow him completely. Not follow some things about him. Follow him completely. This is the true circumcision of a believer. That we are separated from our flesh and led by the spirit. That the soul, it's not that you won't have emotions, you won't have feelings. But the Bible says, sin has no dominion over you. It cannot control you. It cannot control you. This is the real thing. Every other journey was started by men. This one was started by God. To a land that I will show thee. That I will show thee. That I will show thee. I will make thee a great nation. This is what the Lord spoke to me about today. He said, what, what can your faith do? What can, what can your faith do? He asked, what can your faith do? If we multiplied you into the 7 billion people of the earth, what would happen? But do you know that's what God wanted to do with Abraham? That once he had sufficiently dealt with one man, that man became a, a manufacturing center for a whole nation that would see signs, wonders, miracles, that would see favor, that would carry the blessing. Can we multiply you? Can we multiply you into a nation? We can only do that if God becomes your director. So for some of you, as we say this, I tell you this expressly, you're going to go through some things.
God will begin to teach you. You try, you've left your job, went to another one thinking it was the boss. You found the same boss. In, in a new form. For every lesson Israel didn't learn, Pharaoh became Nebuchadnezzar, became Herod, became Pilate. Same story. Until they got the gist that Jesus is Lord. So he has to, he has to shape us. This story of Abraham was not about just a man at 100. It's a man that had been sufficiently dealt with by God. A man that had been schooled in the spirit. And the point of his age at 100 is so that his flesh had died. That's the issue. That he, Abraham knew if anything was to happen here, he <laughs> would not be of the flesh. We can never become the church of God in the flesh. That's why you are fasting because you are, you are buffeting your flesh. That's why we are praying like this. We are seeking God. Father, we want to thank you. For your mercies endure forever. Thank you for leading us, directing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's celebrate God. This week will be a very interesting week. Because we want to break down. I want you to come with an open heart. Because this week we are doing surgery. Right? Open heart surgery. We're doing surgery. Because what is in you determines what comes out of you. Are you hearing me? And God wants to, 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 to separate us by his voice. By his voice. That's, for me, that's what it was. It's not just a, the difference between the believer and the non-believer. It's not the world they live in. It's whose world view they take on. It's also whose voice they hear. God will not transpose you. The journey of Abraham was a journey that began by a voice. God wants to speak to us. We need to allow him. We need to allow him. Amen. Doing surgery. Let's lift up our right hand as we say the grace. Now surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. See you tomorrow as we pray.